Jane Elliott said the N-word during Black History Month, and I was the only person in that room who called her out. And I finally got the footage. Here it is. <laughs> I'm glad for your continued support for Comfort for Life Network. Thank you so much for being part of this. We don't have any bad intention. We share video here for educational purposes, kindly. Uh, we are not here to propagate any kind of hate or racism or nothing of such. So I came across this footage on my For You page on TikTok and I decided to bring it here following what had happened with uh, Owen that has been circulating on social media. But also this is Jen Elliott uh, during Black History Month and the footage has been found of her saying the N-word. And the footage... Um, was brought by someone who was in the room and who called her out. But the turn that this took was different. So I'll let you listen to the to the entire footage, but also I uh, will be stitching some of the reactions that people had to this. But your opinion matters, as I always say. These are people's opinion. So interact with them, challenge them, and light or shed light on those that seems to be um, not correct you know just we're here for that kindly um don't forget to leave <laughs> i've been called angry a lot you've been called what angry, angry. i thought you said <laughs> <"Fuck."> <laughs> and i was going to correct you for that no i don't but you were saying not to refer to people as black or white how do we bring attention to the disparities stop saying it but and then they're going to say to you, I want to be called black. And then you're going to say, you want to be called vicious and savage and evil? I can do that for you. You want me to call your child vicious and savage and evil? Do you know the history of that word? Because if you don't know the history of that word, why it's used, okay, maybe that's the reason you're willing to use it. Once you hear the history of the word, I think you'll say to yourself, this is a good idea. And I don't want to call them black because it's a derogatory term. I know that for years it was seen as a derogatory term, so they, so young blacks decided to be called black. Well, no, it's still a derogatory term, that's still the history of that word. And it still means that you are less than. Because white means goodness and purity, people. And if black means savage, we are evil, which one do you want to be called? Which one do you want to be called? How can you talk about a word and the history behind it when you just said the N-word, hard R? I said, I said that to him for him and for me, not for you to worry about. But you worry about it if you want to. I never, ever say that word, but I said this. Were you offended? No. Don't be offended for him. He can be offended for himself. You don't have to look for him. You understand that? He and I, he and I have met and have talked, and he knows where I'm coming from, and I know where he's coming from. And he and I don't see that as a derogatory term. We know exactly what we're talking about. Wow. You, see, you see it as a derogatory term, you had better use it. If it's a derogatory term to you, don't use it. I ordinarily don't use it. I use it here with that young man. Number one, he's younger than I am, and if he doesn't listen, I'll spank him. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, he's bigger than I am, and I'm not going to Number three, he and I understands about that, understand about that word, and we know it is unacceptable. Now, if the only thing you have heard in all the things I've been saying here is the word N-I-G-G-E-R, that means you've got, you, you're you reacting negatively to that and thinking about that instead of thinking about all the rest of what I've said. While these people were listening, yeah. <laughs> and you were feeling bad about the end word. Yeah, I feel like I, any realistic, genuine reaction, I feel like everybody in this room heard you say hard R, maybe not everybody. Now, what you probably weren't able to tell from that video is I have terrible social anxiety. So I was trying not to cry the whole time and I was in complete shock. I mean, I feel like most people would be when the famous activist Jane Elliott is scolding them in front of a whole group of people agreeing with her that she, as a white woman, can say the N-word. As you heard her say in that clip, saying that black people are black is offensive due to the history and context behind that word. And then she says the N-word. The hypocrisy is glaring. Hi, this is an update from Future Preston who got that video, you know, it got Um, not by me. Um, I just wanna, I, I think I should really clarify some of my reasoning behind posting that video um, because I think, a, 
like so much was lost on that. So the people who are in my life who are black explained to me that they wanted me to not only low battery, but they wanted me that they were glad that I said something. There were black people in that room who were glad that I said something. There are black people that I've never even met who I saw in the comments of the previous video were glad that I said something. There were black people who reached out to me that said, hey, I think in that context that was acceptable. I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong. I'm here to say Jane Elliott said that. Everything I've been taught post-indoctrination tells me that what she said wasn't okay. I hope that, I, I hope that clarifies it. Jane Elliott is a reminder of the dangers of white allyship, so let's talk about it. Recently, a clip service of Jane Elliott calling a black participant in one of her allyship trainings the N-word, and when a white participant called this out, she basically said, this is my black friend and I can say what I want to him. Now, as a black person, I've heard the refrain, but I have a black friend from many white people as a way to justify their small and large acts of racism, and it's shocking to see someone who's so steeped in anti-racism education like Jane Elliott use an excuse that's so rudimentary and disappointing. Something that I see in the clip with Jane Elliott, something that I see with other white allies as well, is seeing allyship as a stagnant identity versus a lifelong journey of learning and unlearning. An additional issue I see from white allies is that they don't realize that a lot of their allyship engagement with black communities is actually paternalism. Now paternalism means that some white allies believe that their history of anti-racism makes them an authority over black communities on race. And it means they become way too comfortable with how they engage with black communities, including disrespectfully engaging with black communities, which we see again from Jane Elliott. And in fact, in one of my graduate classes at Harvard University, one of my white identified colleagues was bragging about her allyship to the class, about how great of an ally she was to black communities. And my black female professor said to her, your framework of allyship is very faulty. And I don't believe this engagement is going to help people with their anti-racism knowledge, nor do I think it will benefit black communities. And my classmate had the nerve to look at my black female professor and she said, you are wrong. And my knowledge of race is, be is better basically than your knowledge of race. Right there, we see allyship, paternalism and arrogance all coming together to create more harm than good. She saw herself as an authority over black communities on race, which meant that she was actually doing harm to both the white communities she was teaching and the black communities she thought she was supporting. I see great issues of allyship and a fundamental misunderstanding of allyship in my work as a diversity, equity, and inclusion consultant. In fact, the data says that 80% of white identified colleagues identify as allies at work, but only 10% of black women and 19% of Latinx women have experienced allyship at work at all. And so this shows that white folks are overestimating their allyship and again, really misunderstanding what it looks like to be an ally in action. And something I want to highlight is many consultants are even doing away with the language of allyship. Most people are moving into language around being an accomplice or being a co-conspirator. Language that helps give us a better understanding of what it looks like to support people across lines of identity, to support communities who experience marginalization and subjugation. The video that's recently surfaced of Jane Elliott using the N-word hard R during Black History Month and doubling down and gaslighting the person who called her out instead of apologizing can teach us a couple of things. First things first, being an ally does not mean you are above reproach or criticism and that your anti-racism education journey is over. The work of anti-racism and educating ourselves is constant work. It is everyday work. And that doesn't change even if you are an educator or a leader in this space. Jane Elliott is a world-renowned diversity educator who was held in high esteem for her work over the past few decades. She is what many would regard as an ally. However, just because you are an ally and are in community with marginalized group does not give you carte blanche to say slurs. Just because she's held in such high esteem, however, does not mean she is above reproach or correction. When you watch the video of her reaction as she is confronted, she dismisses the person who calls her out for using this word. Not only does she dismiss him, she scolds him in front of everybody. In that space, she was regarded as a leader. There is a power dynamic there. And instead of her to use her leadership for better and to use it as a teaching moment for not just herself but everybody else she instead decided to use it to belittle him going as far as to justify her use of the n-word because she is in community with that person presumably the black person she used that word towards he knew what she meant and how she meant it it's giving non-black people who use the n-word who think it's okay for them to use the n-word because they're not white and it will forever be 
a no. What this situation can also teach us, and shout out to the person who confronted her and called her out, is that sometimes in a room, it's going to be only you who's going to be the one to stand up and use your voice. Sometimes it is very scary to be in those situations, especially when there is a power dynamic that is present like there was with Jane Elliott in that space. The work of anti-racism and unconscious bias often means having uncomfortable conversations. The person who called her out, you could hear the fear and almost the hesitation in his voice, but he stayed resolute he stayed strong and I applauded him for that in light of Jane actively not only gaslighting him but then using everybody else in the room to gaslight him into questioning or trying to gaslight him into questioning what he heard and what happened when you go when you watch the video please go and watch the video I will tag the creator in the comments and in this video as well everyone had a visceral and instinct instinctive instant reaction when she said that word you heard everybody react when he addresses that everybody or the majority of the people in the room very likely heard her say that everybody in the room just goes no no she turns it around on him and then says oh speak for yourself and shames him into even bringing it up because she said all of these good things but that one thing is all he could focus on what she did was straight up nasty work very nasty work. The work of anti-racism is not easy. Sometimes you will be the only one in the room speaking up for what is right, but you speak up regardless. Jane Elliott and other diversity, equity, inclusion leaders and speakers in this space, we are forever learning. The work of anti-racism is never over. And just because you call yourself an ally does not mean you are above reproach or being called in. Just like we saw with Jane Elliott about two weeks ago and now with Kes JD, your allyship becomes paternalism when you center yourself in the conversation and think you know more and can speak for the group that you are in allyship with better than they can speak for themselves and know what's good for them. Candace Owens has said a lot of hateful, hurtful, and shocking things about the Black community. She has never atoned for any of those things, often doubling down, and now that she is going through her own situation, you don't get as an ally, you don't get to tell people whether they should support her or not. And not only do you not get to tell people whether they should support her or not, you don't get to tell that to members of her own community, a community you maintain to be an allyship with. The same way you do not have carte blanche to use racial slurs just because of the context or you are in community with those people you claim to be an ally to. I'm really starting to wonder why we see this happen so much in people who maintain to be allies to the black community. We do not see it to this degree in other communities. I'm not entirely sure what the solution is. However, as Kesh JD, I think he has gone off the internet. I hope he uses this as a learning experience and other allies see this happening and understand that Black people and people of marginalized communities are very capable of speaking up for ourselves. Your place as an ally is to amplify. It is to support. Paternalism, centering yourself, and speaking over the voices of the the people you maintain to be in community with as an ally, those have no place in the work of allyship. And thinking the community you are in allyship to is stupid or unintelligent or can't keep up because they don't agree with you, it's it's not the vibe. This work really requires you to close your mouth, open up your ears, open up your heart and listen to people. And if you're not ready to do that, it's really time to question whether you are ready or capable of being an ally. That's all. I've so far loved a few interactions that people have heard of this uh, footage, but I also want to hear from you. What came into your mind when you're listening to the clip? Um, one thing I've noted here, so there are white allies who think that they are, they can advocate better for black people than they can do it themselves, you know, uh, because they're allies and they, they, they permit themselves to, to use the N-word. Uh, because they feel that endearment, they feel more black than they feel white, that I would say. Uh, but um, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Um, and when she was called out, uh, she, uh, the time she took was that how everyone who is a, uh, everyone who is a leader would do, you know, this is a young guy who has approached you, has called you out uh, in a meeting of old people and uh, yeah, I think she just acted the way every every mature person would act to defend themselves because you can't let yourself down. Uh, you can't let a young guy like that spur down in such a, a meeting. So yeah, 
that was during Black History Month, and yeah, I'm glad the footage is out there and people are interacting with it. Uh, we're here to educate ourselves, I think, of it. Um, uh, don't forget to like the video and also subscribe to the channel if this is the type of videos you'd want to see.